Greetings from Talent Battle. Hello everyone, I am Rohit from Talent Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to solve the previously asked coding question for Infosys Drive. As you all know that Infosys has announced the hiring process for the job role of specialist programmer and digital specialist mm -hmm. programmer. The pattern of the examination will be three coding questions and three hours is the time and the coding questions are divided into three different levels of difficulty that is basic level medium level and high level in which they have mentioned that expectations of the questions will be basic foundation and data structures then greedy algorithm approach and dynamic programming approach so today we will discuss the coding question related to that with a little bit of high level of difficulty before starting with the actual contents, quickly join our social media handles so that you will get constant updates for the placement preparation. All the links are provided in the description box. Apart from that, you can also join our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you will get constant notification and updates regarding all the videos. So let us start with the actual content now. The difficulty level and as per the difficulty level if you see the questions understanding of the question is very much important if you understand the question and identify the logic flow then easily you can write down the code so coding part is very easy once you understand the things which are already provided what kind of condition they have mentioned if you properly analyze those conditions with given provided inputs sample inputs then easily you can figure out the logic and as well as coding part will be easy. So just read the question first and try to develop the logical aspect. The approach of solving the question is very important part. So what I will be doing is we will first analyze the question properly. We will develop an approach what kind of approach we can take after analyzing the question. And then based on that approach, step by step, we will write down the code. So the question is a computer system with a quad core processor is handling multiple tasks. Now you all are aware what exactly the meaning of quad core is, right? Four cores will be there in one processor. There are multiple processors which are having four cores. See, so what they have specifically provided that we will be having multiple processors. and each processor say for example p will have four cores the meaning of this the total number of tasks to be handled is equals to the total number of cores in the system this is our important statement suppose one processor is there p1 which is having four cores so the total number of tasks is equals to the total number of cores in the particular system so that much amount of tasks they are going to provide every task has a fixed execution time and each processor has a specified time also after which it course will become free to take the new task so two types of information first one is fixed execution time and second one is specified time for every processor and if exactly four tasks are assigned to each processor they will run independently on a particular processor. So every processor is having four cores. Everyone is having fixed execution time. Even processor is having its specified time and independently they are working. So every core will get one process. We can understand this statement from it. And as per the cores which are available for every processor, number of processors and number of cores will be equal. So every processor is having four cores, they will be handling four tasks. If two processors are there, then there will be eight cores and they will be handling eight tasks. Because total number of tasks to be handled is equal to the total number of cores in the system. Right? Then what is asked? What is the minimum time that all tasks to be processed? So minimum time we have to identify, but where all tasks should get processed within that particular time. What is provided? you are given with list of available time of all processors that is p and the list of execution time of all the tasks that is t 
constraint parameters are also there and they have mentioned that complete the function processor time okay so in such kind type of questions they will give you a snippet code snippet will be there and within that snippet you have to just modify the respective function so you will write down the code in that function rest of the things will be as it is no need to touch that and then try check out your answer is correct or not okay so let us see what kind of function they have given i have directly added that function to id okay so see here the main function and input parameter is already provided here the processor time and task time and uh, here is my function processor time the code we have to write down here in this particular function okay so once we complete this function part then we can directly cross check the output so let us first discuss the logical part of it we will finalize the approach and then we will write down the code okay so test case 1 p is given that is processors 8 and 10 so there are two processors from this we can figure out and 8 is the time of the processor because it is mentioned in the problem statement read twice if you didn't understand the problem statement in one attempt read it twice and try to figure out the meaning of each and every line because the complexity lies itself in the description if you analyze the problem statement properly then it the rest of the task is very easy so processor has a specified time it is mentioned here so here p is having specified time 8 and 10 so two processors are there so if i write down like this processor 1 time is equals to 8 you can take any unit for just for the reference and discussion suppose 8 seconds and processor 2 is having time is equals to 10 seconds now i am targeting first test case here after that t is equals to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight values are there so total eight values so these values are nothing but the specific time for the every task right specific time for the every task fixed execution time and every processor is going to have four cores so here four cores will be there second processor will also have four cores see so total we have total we have eight cores and the task are also eight so every core is going to handle one particular task right and the output means the minimum time to complete all the task to be processed is already given that is 60 similarly in second test case also the task time is same only the processor time is different so this time of 8 second 10 seconds or in the second test case also 5 seconds and 11 seconds this is the time of the processor processor has a specific time okay so this one and this one we have to utilize these two values to generate the minimum time of all tasks to be processed now what we can do as per the understanding of the problem statement we have to add the processor time to the task time if i do that processor time to the task time right so if my diagrammatic representation is like this suppose this is processor 1 which consists of four cores okay and every core suppose this is c1 c2 c3 and c4 and i am going to assign the task to it so out of this eight task which four now here again our main uh, problem is how to assign the task means how you are going to distribute this task this is our main challenge okay now time given to p1 is 8 seconds so this processor is going to be free right because all tasks are running on independent time so minimum time if you have to calculate you have to add this maximum time uh, processor time with the task time and if i am referring to the maximum time taken by the task for each and every core that can be maximum time means all tasks are complete right all tasks are complete because suppose if you see the first task it is taking 3 seconds only but the third one is taking 8 seconds so the time taken by the processor will be 8 seconds na then next one is 7 seconds like this so all task to be get complete that will be the time which is maximum time and that is minimum for entire processor so that we need to identify but it will be in two huh? 
two processors we have to take parallelly so the main challenge is to distribute this task now if i distribute sequentially suppose 3 1 8 and 7 first four task for first four first processor so core 1 will complete 3 seconds then it will be free then core 2 will be free in 1 seconds 3 8 seconds and 4 7 seconds so core 3 will be the last one who will take 8 seconds to finish but when my processor will be empty when my processor will finish all the tasks so for that we have to add this value processor time plus task time we have to add this value processor time plus task time so 8 plus for every core we have to do it separately so for c1 if i am doing 8 plus 3 then it will be 8 plus 1 then 8 plus 8 and 8 plus 7 okay see 11 9 16 and this will be 15 and the maximum time will be all tasks complete so when my all tasks will be completed when my this task is complete and what is the time taken 60 mm -hmm. similarly you have to calculate the same kind for second processor also so that will be 10 plus because processor time is 10 seconds 10 seconds plus all these values separately for core because all four are already done remaining four you will take for processor 2 but here if we have to identify the minimum one then what we have to do is we have to organize or we have to distribute this task in such a way that maximum time taken task should be allocated to the minimum time of the processor so that course will get free easily this is the only case but it is again logical if you try with second approach also then also we have to check whether it behaves in the same fashion or not okay but as per my understanding and the given problems description this will be the effective approach that if I understand and if I allocate the task which are higher like say 8, 7, 5 and 4 if I allocate it to the 8 second tower processor then this will be the efficient way as compared to this because it will take more time no? so minimum will be calculated in this manner by adding the processor time plus task time now once I distribute the task like highest time taken by the task can be allocated to the processor who is getting free first because if I compare these two processors P1 will be the first processor who will get free first now because it is working all the tasks in 8 seconds and this will take 10 seconds for every core so this will be the first processor who will get so I will allocate maximum time taken by the task to the processor who is taking minimum time now how we can do that so we can have uh, sorting sorting because it is an list element so we can sort them ascending or descending after sorting we can just take first four and allocate to the p1 and then remaining will be allocated to the second task okay so multi-dimensional array will help me in this case by understanding only you can figure out what kind of technical concept we will utilize now how you are going to apply this so let's have a detailed discussion on this so for example first here I am going to write down the approach in the right hand side and here will be our logical explanation so first I will take highest time so sorting of array sort the array okay so what is my array 3187 now I will sort it in descending order So it will give me 8, 7, 5, 4. Okay. 8, 7, 5, 4. Then 3, 2, 2, and 1. Then divide this. First 4, second 4. This is allocated to P1. These tasks are allocated to P2. Okay. Now P1 is like this which consists of four cores this is p1 which is taking time eight seconds i have just assumed this unit huh? you can take it any for discussion only i have did that then my second processor p2 is taking 10 seconds now as we discussed we will sort and we will assign the maximum time taking task these four are maximum time taking to allocate the processor who is less time taking that is p1 so my c1 core 1 core 2 core 3 core 4 now you can assign any core because all of them are part of same processor so i will assign sequentially 8 7 5 and 4 
here also core 1 core 2 core 3 core 4 for second processor that is p2 and remaining part 3 2 2 1 now we have seen to calculate the time taken we have to add the time of the task with the processor timing so after adding my results for every core will be 8 plus 8 16 7 plus 8 15 5 plus 8 13 and 4 plus 8 12 right then here also we will apply the same logic what we have did for first processor 10 plus 3 13 10 plus 2 12 10 plus 2 12 and 10 plus 1 11 got the point so after performing sorting we got the total time taken by every task to complete and out of that which task is the one 16 this is our output because this is the time right this is the maximum time that we can wait we have to wait so although it is looking maximum but actually this is the minimum time that processor is going to take to complete all the task and that is what the question is minimum time to complete all the task that much amount of time processor has to work so 16 is the output and that is expected one also as per the provided test case now one more thing that we need to consider here is processors see this value here also now if we are applying the logic that maximum task time is allocated to the processor who is working on less time but suppose this is in again not in sorted manner then then we have to add one more extra step to perform the sorting of processors also so in some cases you might have to sort the processors array in ascending order as well so make sure that maximum time taking by the task should be assigned to the least time taking processor that is what we have done right so now you got the values and 16 is the output as per the this case now one more logic you can develop here is if I am taking minimum value from here minimum value that is 8 and from here I am taking maximum value that is also 8 because here I am targeting that value to will take that will take maximum time to process and here it is minimum time of the processor so if I add this then also I am getting the answer but this is not a generalized logic it is only applicable here so I, I got this idea while discussing this part but it is not applicable because here if I go with the same logic the minimum part of this processor value is 5 plus maximum from this is 8 so it is giving me 13 now but my actual output is 14 means this logic will not work for all the test cases so this is fine this will give me the correct solution now I am getting 16 from here which is my least time and beyond to this we cannot get maximum 16 seconds we have to work and that is the minimum time for to complete all the processing task now let us check that whether this approach is working for second test case also if yes then we can continue with this approach so again the input parameters are same so my sorting will also be same first four values will be 8 7 5 4 remaining four will be 3 2 2 1 assign this to p1 which is having five seconds and this will be to p2 processor which is having 11 seconds then create the cores and their addition of numbers here also okay c1 c2 c3 c4 c1 c2 c3 c4 value is 8 7 5 4 3 2 2 1 now addition total time will be second processor value plus task value 8 plus 5 13 12 10 9 11 plus 3 14 13 13 12 see out of all eight tasks we will target now we will target all eight tasks total time completed will be 14 seconds to complete all the task before that all the tasks are getting complete so from here I got 14 and this is what the expected output so this is working for both the possibilities okay now we can develop the logic now what will be our approach to write down the code so I hope the explanation and understanding is clear to everyone again I will repeat the same analyze the question properly once you analyze it then easily you can figure out the case now let us write down the approach approach to solve this 
discussion we have done logical aspects are clear now now programming terms what kind of technical concepts we can use so i will be requiring sorting now we don't need to worry about the input input and code related to that is already provided in the code part so we have to only work on function right so only function we have to write now in the function part input we are directly getting now first we have to perform the acceptance of the value so declaration will be there so if i use uh, 2d array why 2d array because first we'll store the processor value processor time and second we'll store the task time separately given na to us so one will work for this so it will be nested for loop in this case to handle this one will handle processor time one will handle task time then next parameter will be sorting sorting in ascending order and then we uh, sorting for processor we have to do in ascending order processor and for task we have to again sort but this will be in reverse order so we can apply the functionality for that reverse order okay now nested loop will take the values and uh, we will get the uh, values of processor timing and task time so my main logical part will be processor time pro time plus t time that is task time right this value and we will store this but we will require one more reference because i don't have the value for uh t time separate t time na so i will use a counter variable that will help me to work as a reference and i can increment it inside the loop now whatever the result we will get out of this addition of entire array because we are working on 2d so we need to calculate the maximum out of it max value is my final output na so max value calculation we have to do and then return the result to the function so this will be the approach simple approach that will work okay now let us write down the code for this and then we will cross check both the test cases whether they are providing me the same output or not so i will go to the coding part see here already the function is given even my inputs are already provided 5113187452 now i have to write down my function processor time so parameters are p time and t time p time stands for processor time t time stands for task time now first as per the approach i have to declare a 2d array suppose i am taking answer final answer is equals to new int okay now how many processors are there right that we will be changing and it will be generalized so based on the size calculation you can do that so if i am using p time dot size try to write down generalized code so that it will be satisfied for all the hidden test cases also and the second parameter is uh, t time how many task and we know that it is already mentioned in the problem statement that every processor will have only four cores even the title of the problem is also quad core so that will be fixed and that is four now apply the sort so we know that there is a sort method under collections that we will use so first i will sort my processor times and then i will apply sorting for my t times sort t time that is my task time but we have to do it in uh, reverse na because we need highest task time taken and that we have to assign so t time comma we can again do the collections where there is a function called as reverse order this will give me reverse order of the sorting see i am using built in functionalities from framework collections of java and these functionalities are already there so if you are not aware about these functionalities just revisit the foundation parameters and you will get a clear idea about this from framework collections now as mentioned earlier i will maintain a reference which is initialized to 0 and i will maintain one result value okay now i have to compare this whatever the value i will get that is addition of my 
प्रोसेसर टाइम एंड टास्क टाइम आई हैव टू कंपेयर इट विद द करंट वैल्यू करंट वैल्यू कैन बी जीरो इफ आई इनिशियलाइज इट टू जीरो बट सपोज इफ देर इज अ प्रोसेसिंग टास्क दैट इज विद जीरो देन अगेन दैट विल नॉट वर्क कंपेरिजन विल नॉट वर्क सो वी विल टेक मिनिमम वैल्यू बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट मैक्सिमम आउट ऑफ इट सो कंपेरिजन शुड बी डन विद मिनिमम वैल्यू सो दैट आई विल गेट द मैक्सिमम आउट ऑफ इट सो यू कैन टेक जनरल इंटीजर मिनिमम वैल्यू ओके नाउ माई इनिशियलाइजेशन इज रेडी सॉर्टिंग पैरामीटर्स आर ऑल्सो डन नाउ माई नेस्टेड फॉर लुप ओके फंक्शन वी आर राइटिंग टू डी आर इज डन नेस्टेड फॉर लुप एंड देन एडिशन ऑफ द प्रोसेसर टाइमिंग एंड टास्क टाइम इन साइड दैट सो इन नेस्टेड फॉर लुप आई विल यूज माई नॉर्मल लॉजिक आई इज इक्वल्स टू जीरो and i will traverse according to the processor so p time that is processor time up to how many processors that will be generated by size function and then i plus plus inside this for integer j is equals to 0 j less than 4 because this value is fixed j is working for cores here and that is fixed for every processor If you take three processors also, then will will be again four because that processor third one will also consist of four cores only, so that is part of cores. Now my result answer with values i and j. So initially i will be zero, j will be zero. Then for j it will nestedly figure out for all four cores. So when my first processor which is at i zero is going on, all my j will execute four times. Four cores will cover, and then again next processor again four times. So I am covering all the possibilities. Then accept the value from my processor. So that will be p time dot get of i where i is zero plus t time that is my task time dot get of now yeah here I am going to use that reference because if I use j here then it will not work. Count will be utilized which is initially zero. as a index i am using it as a reference because i cannot use separate here in nested for loop so i am using that reference and i will increment it separately so this will give me the processor value plus task associated to that and one by one all cores will be covered because my nested for loop will execute in that manner after this i will have increment of count and then we have to just finalize the result so result is equals to max value max value from my Answer array, which is my final array. Answer array. So I am using functionality again. Math max. Math max will be from my result, comma. The array that I am having. So that is answer. Answer of i and j. See. Now it will give me the comparison of result value and initially result value will be minimum integer. That is, I think, uh, mostly the negative integer value. and for that it will be compared with the answer array which is already having addition of processor timing and task timing so we have this values na what we have already calculated here this addition 11 9 16 15 all these values are there in my final answer array out of this whoever is the maximum that value is our result because that is the minimum time that we have to perform for all tasks to be covered because if you take 11 or you take minimum value that is 9 then only 9 seconds if i take then remaining task are incomplete so the time which is taken maximum is the minimum time to complete all the task because the question is related to the all the task not a individual task so this will give me max out of this and that is my final result and after the for loop completion i will just return this value which will be transferred to the function parameter here at line number 14 and it will print okay so we haven't touched the input parameter main function we have just modified this much portion okay now let us execute this and the second test case is already provided here 511 so answer should be 14 in this parameter okay yes we got the 14 parameter and uh, i will change it for my first test case also so that is it working where is my first test case 8 comma 10 and task time is same save it and execute it see 
16 see you got the answer fine so this is how you can figure out the logical aspect and final code will be executable so i hope you got the idea about the logical explanation and understanding of the problem so for such kind of difficulty level problems once now when we will see the code you will feel that it was very easy but analysis was done properly understanding of each and every line was understand uh, identification of the required things was done and then we figure out the logic for that okay so focus on analysis and definitely you can crack this so thank you for watching the video till the end don't forget to subscribe our channel for more videos thank you